What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. Hope you like part one and two of this project. We've got some more of the framing done and now we're on to some of the details. Today, I'm gonna start framing out for this crazy deck inlay that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna walk you through that whole thing. Make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. This is where our deck inlay is gonna go, right in the center of this deck. So check out this rendering. Everything about this inlay is gonna be pretty complicated, so I'm gonna start by sketching this thing out and figuring out some rough measurements, and then I'm gonna verify once we start laying down some deck boards. But uh, everything's gotta be pretty close to dead on for this thing to all come together and uh, make it look right. So I'm gonna sit down and figure that out real quick, do some calculations, get everything ready, and then we'll start framing it up. Before we get started on any of this, what we're doing is going around with this six foot level, and we're just planing down the joists and we go here, tap on both sides, make sure there's no rock to it. Now that's looking good and we're just on the final stage here, checking our last couple areas, making sure that we don't have any rock in here because we have this crazy inlay going in so we really need to make extra sure that this thing's really flat because it'll make all those little waves more apparent because of all the breaks and decking that we have and all the cuts. So we're taking our time on this and then uh, we're gonna have a lot of flashing tape on this as well because a lot of blocking, planing a lot of stuff down. So we'll be on to that next. And it's really hot out here, it's crazy. All right, we've got this whole thing planed down and now we're getting to some really, really confusing parts. So I'm gonna try to walk you through as best I can my thinking behind this whole thing because we really want everything to work out perfectly we want all of these diagonal inlays to intersect between boards so that we have a full board at this end of the inlay, all full boards here, and then at the other side, it picks up with another full board. So we won't have any rips and all of our intersecting lines inside of this inlay, they're either all gonna be in between a board or it's gonna be at the center of a board, but we want it to be the same at each intersection. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. Another curveball that we have to throw into here is that we're gonna base the layout of the deck off of this kitchen because we want these field boards to go like this and straight up this kitchen. Show them that. Our board's gonna go right across here and go up. This board is gonna overhang an inch and a half. So this is gonna be our next board right here. And I measured our center point of the deck. It was right about here. But we're gonna move it to the center of this board and that's what I'm gonna measure the inlay off of. So. We're gonna start our deck layout based off of this. We might have a rip at the very end of the deck. We might have a rip there, but it's all about minimizing what's gonna draw the eye the most. And the eye's gonna be drawn to this inlay. So we want everything around this to be perfect. So I have my measurements figured out. We're gonna have our blocking be a little bit big, but there's not a whole lot of room for air here. So I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing and uh, hopefully it works out in the end. We'll see, cause it's pretty complicated. We're starting to get our blocking situation figured out. And right in between this bay is where a lot of intersecting stuff is gonna be happening. So I figured it'd be easier to just put flat blocking on the whole thing. So we built these out. Then you can see I just screwed these on top, dropped it right in there, and now it's holding it right in place. And because we packed these joists out so far, I'm gonna have to use some six inch timber locks, but that'll get it locked in and uh, take away some of the guesswork here on both sides, which will be nice. Now that we've got blocking in our two bays on the end, that's where our border is gonna be. Now we can start laying out this inlay. Take a look at the rendering one more time. You can see that it's two diamonds wide, three diamonds deep. So that's what this whole thing is based on. We figured it out based on 21 boards of our field. That's what we want this inlay to encompass. So everything that's inside of the inlay, the Costa boards, which is the light brown, those are gonna go through and it's gonna look like we just cut through them because that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we base this whole inlay on 21 deck boards. And 21 deck boards with a 3 16 gap in between each one turns out to be about 120 inches. Because we made this inlay three diamonds deep and two diamonds wide, and we wanted everything to be at perfect 90 degree angles, we had to make sure that we were calculating that correctly. So on that side two by 10 flat blocking, we made marks from our starting point at 40 and 80 inches and then across that two by six that's running perpendicular to the joist, we made a mark right in the middle and that gave us our grid. The only thing we had to be careful of is that we remember exactly where our starting point was so that once we put the deck boards down, we can be snapping those same exact lines 
and our blocking is going to be right underneath where we need it to be so we can screw down all of our deck boards and nothing is hanging off. Now that we have all of our diagonal lines snapped and drawn out, we basically, what we did was lined up the center of a two by six with our chalk line and then traced it because that's what's gonna be laying in here. So see, we've got some of these cut. Just run the saw through it. That's always fun. So we're getting this going. <laughs> this is gonna be insane gonna be really crazy looking just with the framing wait till we start getting decking on it it's gonna be awesome all right so yesterday we got a lot of this notched out and we started putting some of our nailers down here on the flat and these are flat two by sixes so we're gonna keep that going here today. I also got a haircut last night. I picked up a new pouch this morning. I'm a new man, it's got the suspenders. And it started rocking the suspenders, what, like two months ago? Yeah. He was a pretty big fan of them. I'm loving it already. It feels like, feels like, you know, when you put a spoiler on your car, it adds horsepower. That's what I've just done to my body. So um, today we're gonna have this done in no time. And uh, I'll continue to walk you through the steps because we're almost done with the framing stage. Then we can start laying some decking, but that's gonna be on the next vlog. thing is looking pretty crazy we've got all of our flat blocking in and now the last thing that we're doing is supporting any pieces that intersect like right here we're doing a double two by four just to support those ends so it's also going to stiffen this whole thing up a lot not that we need it because with all these pieces of cross bracing it's stiff as can be but damn that looks super cool it's gonna be a cool drone shot just the framing We've got all of our under blocking in here. You can see we just put it anywhere, like right here. This one's just getting nailed into this. So we wanted to get something solid underneath of it so we can nail straight down to it. So every single end is supported. It's like a million pieces of blocking. And the last thing that we're doing is just checking it with a six foot level, making sure that we're nice and flat because with this crazy inlay, we have some humps or some dips in here. It's gonna be really evident, so we don't want that. I wanna make sure that this thing doesn't see any water whatsoever, so I actually got roofing underlayment. It's like a ice and water shield, and we just are gonna lay this in sheets, cover the whole thing, and then go underneath and cut it out so it's just covering our flat blocking, but uh, I think it's gonna work out really well. I wanted something nice and thick, and uh, something that's gonna seal around the screws and everything. So this is gonna keep it nice and strong for a long time. We got most of this down. We got one more row to do here. You can see here we did zip tape over this edge and it's under this one because we don't want this to overlap this side of the underlayment because it's pretty thick. That's gonna create a hump. So you can see right here, that's the little gap that we have between that. So we have the zip tape underneath that so that it's nice and good. All right, Jose, you wanna uh, run this line here? So we're putting it over the lip of the underlayment about halfway so that it extends beyond it, and then we'll butt the next piece pretty close to it, but we don't want it to overhang.
We have all of this underlayment down now. It's flashed super well. I'm really, really happy about this. Nothing is gonna be able to penetrate this as far as water or moisture. So this inlay is gonna be solid for a long, long time. I've never seen anybody use this before, uh, roofing underlayment for flashing, but it worked out really, really well for this application. And uh, we'll definitely keep that in our bag of tricks for next time. Well, that's it for this vlog, part one of our deck inlay. Next vlog is gonna be putting the decking in here, cutting out the inlay, finishing this thing up, which is gonna be pretty crazy. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. And until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.